Hey there, welcome to Supercharge Fridays. If you are around and you've been waiting for a few minutes, thank you so much for your patience. We had a little bit of a technical difficulty, but here we are. So thank you for being here. Uh, really appreciate it. And um, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into our topic today. This has been such a fantastic month of learning. Uh, the first week we had Varsha on and we talked about how to have a resume that is, um, you know, when you are in the middle of a career transition. So that is a fantastic um, Supercharged Fridays. Then last week we had Rachel Beck and we talked about LinkedIn etiquette, some do's and don'ts of LinkedIn. And uh, going with the theme of LinkedIn, Today, I have the very fantastic Kevin D. Turner, and we are going to talk about all the latest gizmo bells and whistles about LinkedIn. So please put your hands together. It's very early in the morning for Kevin. Welcome, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Welcome. I appreciate being here. And I do apologize. I just got a brand new MacBook Pro, the M1 chip, and I've tried everything except for StreamYard. So... It just, uh, it didn't want to behave this morning, so. It didn't want to behave, but you're here now, Kevin, and Absolutely. that's all that matters. Um, so I'm going to do something different today. Uh, Kevin has, I'm talking like you're not here. This is the <laughs> third time. This is the third time Kevin has been on this live stream. First time in 2020. Kevin was also on my podcast, and I highly recommend you check it out because Kevin's career has been very colorful. But, uh, the second time was in 2021, and now today. Kevin, even between 2020 and now, like the platform has changed so much, right? Absolutely. You know, it, it, it has actually become much more of a community. And I love that. And the other thing that I think is, is incredible is leadership within LinkedIn yeah. has become involved. Before they yeah. always kind of stood back, they were like, those are the members, don't mingle with them. Yes, I completely agree with you. And we have friends joining from around the world. Very warm welcome, guys. Uh, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. So, Kevin, because this is your third time here, I'm not going to like ask you to introduce yourself. But I am going to ask. I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay? Are you ready? Okay. Okay. <laughs> I know it's early. <laughs> and there's this crazy woman in Brussels. I got my you got your coffee. I got coffee. <laughs> cheers, cheers. Cheers. Kevin, how long have you? How long have you been on LinkedIn? I've been on LinkedIn since February of 2005. Okay. Back then, they used to actually issue you a letter. And uh, I got the letter that I was within the first two million. And I don't think they do that anymore. <laughs> no, no. Like, that would be like almost 800 million letters. And it would be like a team job just to make those letters. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And um, so that's like hmm, almost like... 17 years. And in this period of time, how long have you been training people on LinkedIn? Since the very beginning. Since I, very I beginning. started doing um, kind of free training for different groups uh, within the area that I'm in here, Dallas, Fort Worth. There were a lot of uh, people in transition. Yeah. And, you know, LinkedIn at that time was kind of where you put your resume, shall we yeah. say, and where you did yeah. your job thing. I would say till very recently, Kevin. Yeah. Right? Yes. Well, there was there was no articles, there were no, no, uh, no communication. You couldn't no. post, you couldn't comment. All those community features came later. So it, later. back then, it was just it was yeah, your brochure. Yeah. It, it was a brochure, exactly. So seventeen years training people on LinkedIn, and in these seventeen years, how much time have you been doing this full time? Like your bread and butter, your business, your livelihood. A little over 10 years full-time. I know. Before 2011. That, it, I've interviewed you, so I know. T 2011. Yeah, it was just a side gig. It was a side gig, exactly. Um, And then it became a full-time thing. And yeah. how much of your business comes, you know, like from LinkedIn? Uh, from LinkedIn directly, probably. Directly and, in, directly and indirectly. Yeah, new business, I would say 65% is, is uh, new business off LinkedIn, and then, of course, repeat business is a, is a big uh, piece of that as well. But, yeah, it's it's coming from LinkedIn. Okay, amazing. Now, the reason I, I put you on the spot and the reason I was asking is because people, I highly recommend you check out um, Kevin's profile if you don't know who he is and you don't, you're don't you new to LinkedIn. I highly suggest you, you follow because you can't think of – there are very few people out there who actually are at that level, and Kevin is one of them. And second, I mean, Kevin, you don't just – 
preach, you also practice what you preach, right? Everything that you're saying, you're, you're putting it into practice in your own business. And you're one of the first, we know, we know you have ears and I don't know if that makes sense in English. You have ears in many places. So you hear about the new features <laughs> and you like share it with everyone. So that's really great. Uh, and let's talk about those darn changes because there's so much, um, you know, constantly like impossible to keep up, right? We all have work, we all have jobs and this itself is like a full-time job. So let's talk about the latest features in 2022. There's uh, we are going to talk about the four, four of them, right? Kevin and I had a, a pre-chat. We're going to talk about like what kind of timing are we talking about for the rollouts? Because there can be an element of frustration. Is it like always North America first? Not necessarily, right? Maybe there's, you know, trialing out in a few countries. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about creator mode. We're going to talk about audio events, which is actually very new. Like yeah, while yeah. we speak, it's super new, very Still like fresh. in beta. Right. Still in beta, exactly. And and we're going to talk about newslet newsletters. And I know that this is a post that I think you shared just yesterday. So uh, let's talk about keeping all this in mind. I know our audience is quite diverse. I mean, my audience, and, and I think to some extent, Kevin, your audience, is people who are ambitious career professionals. So we're always going to see this with our audience in mind, our, our, our target audience. But anyone else listening, you're so welcome here because you're going to learn and you're going to get a lot out of it. So let's talk about the timing before we talk about what those features are. Tell us a little bit about, like, how does that work? You know, and it's interesting. I think first, the best thing to think about is, you know, the platform is immense. There are over uh, 800 and, what, 25 million, I think, is, is the close to number right now. All using this platform, it is really complicated code-wise because it began back in 2003, and what it is today was never meant to be, right? It evolved. And when something like this evolves, they just add code on top of code on top of code, and it gets really complicated. So they know, in LinkedIn knows, if they're going to launch a new feature, they can't just throw it out there to everybody because it could blow up the site, right? And if I said, you know, oh, we, did, we made a mistake and there's no LinkedIn for the next five days until we can figure it out, what would the majority do, right? <laughs> we would panic. Would it be fair? Yes, we all got the same feature at the same time, but the site blew up. So they know that that could happen. And that's why they roll out LinkedIn new features in waves, right? The yes. first wave is small. And then yes. it gets larger as they are testing, yes. right, the product. And so if it does well, the next yes. wave will roll out. If there needs to be fixes, they fix it before the next wave. Now, a normal rollout, it's randomized. And that's the most important thing. It is never personal, <laughs> right? Although we take it personally, it's never personal. Sometimes <laughs> we will be first. We'll be right on that wave, right? And we get, to, we get to surf the wave in and we feel really brilliant. And we tell everybody it's because we are so special on LinkedIn. Yeah. Don't, do that. Don't do that anymore because you're not... <laughs> It's randomized. So each way. Sorry to burst your bubble in case someone's listening. Like I got cover story before people in South Africa. I mean, yeah, it's uh, it's not what you think. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing special about it. It is randomized. And it's done that way on purpose because there have been new features that have been terrible. Yeah. And there have been, you know, if they came like, to the same like, people every like, time. Like LinkedIn stories? Like LinkedIn I, stories. I was never a fan. Um, there was a one that was called notes where you could take notes on your profile. I took so many notes because it was in that first wave and then they disappeared. Notes? I had notes on everybody. Oh, I didn't know this one. Yeah. So okay. sometimes being the first in is not the best not thing the best. because it can change. Um, they don't tell you it's coming. So you think you're, you're insane, right? Your profile just changed completely. Everything moved around and nobody else is seeing it. And you're telling them and they're going, you're crazy. I can't see it. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's the other exactly. thing about a rollout. If you don't have it yet, you can't see it. You can't see it. No, thank yeah. you for it. I think that is really helpful to understand yeah. how things roll out. And as a company as well, I think I need, I mean, we need to have a lot of respect for something like this. It's a, it's a machine. Um, it's not uncommon to see Instagram down, Facebook down for a few hours. LinkedIn down for a few hours or days. I mean, the, the expression that comes to my mind is in, in French, quel 
oh, oh, like what horror <laughs> would yeah. it be for so many people. Kill oh, oh. But I, before we move on, because this is really helpful, I want to give a quick shout out to our lovely viewers here who waited and are finally here. Good morning to everybody watching. Varsha, um, Melissa, um, sorry, LinkedIn user, I'm not sure who you are. Put your name in so I can say hi. Nigel, Manmeet, G is here. We have friends, Tegan, Rich, Jeff, Risto. Lovely. Thank you guys for being here. Oh, of course, Jeff is here. Oh, how awesome is that? Hi, Ananya. Good to see you here. Rakesh, I normally don't do this, but you guys are amazing. I mean, you you deserve all the love in the world. <laughs> I really mean that. Some new faces here. Habiba. Hey, John and Rachel. Fantastic. And I want a special shout out because Varsha said something that will make your day. King of LinkedIn, you got to do the link, the disco. <laughs> <laughs> the king of disco. Um, those, those amazing. Brilliant people. And, you know, I sometimes I get to be the face of introducing new features. Doesn't always come from me. It takes a tribe to keep up with LinkedIn. There is no mm -hmm. doubt. And many of the people that are here are contributing. They're sharing things with me so I can find out more and I can share them, you know, further. With us lesser mortals. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it comes from everywhere. So it it, from I don't everywhere. always discover it, but I usually will figure it out and make sure I can present it so people can understand it. And it does. It takes many people to do this. I just get to do the fun part, I think, sometimes. It does. It does. And and so good on the the timing and the rollout. Absolutely, G. It's not personal, even if you're one of the last to get it. And let's talk about creator mode. Because when we talked, it was May 2021. It was very fresh. And yes. since then, you know, creator mode, like, I want to see this from a career perspective, right? It's an interesting shift that's going on. There's a whole creator manager community on LinkedIn. Like, a, not community, sorry, team. Like, they're actually salaried people. And there's a head of creator manager. So explain to us, what does it mean for the normal, average Jane and Joe watching? Well, and I think if you go back and you think of your profile, your profile is a brochure, right? You have to get people to the brochure. Yes. Your activity on LinkedIn is your ad campaign, right? That's where you get people excited about you, about the uh, Asano. That's how you get that done. And then they come back to your profile and they go, wow, she also does this. I want that, right? So, you know, that's how you should think of creating content is running your own ad campaign. And that's what we're doing. Yeah, we're our own product, right? And we want to be sold uh, to the best uh, buyer that's part of the process. And so that's where kind of this creator community came in was a lot of people understood if I'm posting, if I'm adding value, I don't have to sell, right? I, it can be nothing to do with what I sell, but I'm adding value. I'm improving lives. I'm engaging people. I'm building this group of people who want to come and do business with me. Our, our friend Bob Berg uh, always says, uh, all things equal, right? We buy from what? People we know, like, and trust. There you go. And that's, that's really what LinkedIn is about, is creating that know, like, and trust through engagement. And, okay. you know, uh, LinkedIn realized this. The number one attractiveness to LinkedIn isn't to build your profile, isn't to look for jobs, it's to educate, learn, share, build community and network. And LinkedIn realized that content was that key. If you can get the content anywhere else, it's not really that sticky, right? You don't come for it. But if you have people creating this content daily, then you have more people coming to the platform and using it. The more active members are, right? The better their profiles are. And that is basically where LinkedIn's revenue comes from. Uh, absolutely. So, absolutely. You know, they've, got to, they've got to create it. And they spend a lot of money hiring people to help people like you, me, anybody else in the audience to help them make better content. Yeah, no, that's that's amazing. I actually never thought of it this way. And I want to repeat what you just said for uh, the benefit of our listeners. Your, your profile is your brochure, yes. Mm -hmm. And your activity section, right? When you go to your profile, you have activity and you click on it and you can see videos, 
text post, with, you know, um, um, picture, whatever you've been doing, going live like this is yeah. in my activity. That is your advertise, your ad campaign. And the best part is it's free. The platform is free to use. I had premium for a month. I literally took the free trial and I was like, honestly, I'm getting so much value from it <laughs> without paying a dime. So this is a, a, a fantastic way to look at it. And if you're not using it, we don't want to create FOMO in your head, but you are leaving serious cash on the table, right? You're leaving it. It's Absolutely. somebody else will take it. And and talk to us about the tools that can help us because things have become a much more streamlined now, right, Kevin, right. even compared to 2020. When we and, first, and knowing, when we first knowing just that, LinkedIn tried to make it easy, right? And they created creator mode, which we had talked about before, which at the beginning was just a profile redesign but they promised to bring more things, right? Yes. yes. Part of that was the creator managers. They hired them to help. Yes. And then um, they added two tools uh, into creator mode that nobody really knew how to get before. They kind of magically appeared, right? You were anointed uh, live or you were anointed newsletter. You didn't know how it happened. It just happened. Now, if you turn on creator mode, it auto applies for you to have those features. So if you ever wanted live, you can get live that way. If you want a newsletter, you can get newsletter that way. Now, it's not a guarantee just because yeah. you turned it on. You yeah. still have to be a good member and standing on LinkedIn, right? If you're causing trouble every week, they might not take it, right? What <laughs> is the definition? Because we, we, I don't we wanna, always. Yeah, we want to be clear here because none of us wakes up in the morning and says we're going to create trouble. Uh, but the definition is, is it like, um, you know, people have been reporting your post or your comment or, or have yes. many people or, been blocking you? Or even, you know, if you think about it, everything on, on LinkedIn is digital, right? So yes. they're doing digital analytics on us all the time. So if every time we get on LinkedIn, we're like, oh, I just hate Sanal, right? I, I, oh, she's, she's always wrong. And this is horrible. And, and I'm going to, you know, fight everything she says. That becomes part of my digital predictive, my digital persona. And LinkedIn sees that. And so am I going to give that person, if I'm LinkedIn, a platform so they can spread that, right? Because that's negative. And negative doesn't get people, you know, to stay on the platform. So LinkedIn knows that. So these are tools that they do award to people, but you have to have that kind of good behavior and, you know, they always used to say if, if you were looking for a job, they go on social media to see if you're going to be a cultural fit, right? And so the recruiter or HR would go out and look or the hiring manager and say, oh, no, 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 I don't like this person because this is how they act. That's now being digitally processed. Yeah, yeah. So All it right. is impacting us, you know, be good players on the platform and, and rewards come, you know, through those. Yeah. So that's how you would get those now. Play nice. So if you play nice, you turn on creator mode on. If you don't know what we're talking about, we talked a lot about this in yeah. last time. So just click on, you know, just do hashtag Supercharge Fridays, Kevin D. Turner. You'll find it either on LinkedIn or even on my YouTube. It's archived. You see it on your profile, about halfway down the first page, you'll see it exactly. right there. It'll say creator mode on off. T toggle it, toggle yeah. it on. It's not a guarantee, but there's a good chance that you play by the rules, uh, you show up regularly, you have some samples of your work that mm -hmm. when you apply, you still have to apply, right, Kevin, to LinkedIn Live? It, it actually auto applies now. It auto applies. Yeah. Now, this is um, great. And I talked about LinkedIn Live um, on um, my 100th edition of Supercharge Fridays and why it's a good idea. So I'm not going to get into it now. Even as a job seeker, it's a great idea. Think about a company who you're interested in. Reach out. Say, I'm going to do a live interview. People love to be seen and people love publicity. It's all about how you message it. So that's great. LinkedIn Live. And talk to us about uh, other creator tools. that What, I, what have we missed? Because I'm sure there's a lot. Well, I mean, those are probably your, your two biggest creator tools, right? Outside of what's called the creator program. Yes. And that's if a manager, creator manager that LinkedIn has hired, I think they have now close to 50 of them around the world. Yes. If they have taken note of you, right? And they start following you. You can build a relationship with them and they will take you under their wing, right? And from there, they will actually uh, make sure you have a better understanding of what's coming uh, when products launch so you don't get surprised. Um, they get you involved in some of the testing of the product. Right now, I'm testing a new 
uh, product with them. I'm one of the beta testers. I get to launch uh, one of these uh, events coming up on the 24th. So I'm excited. Yeah. If I'd not been in that program, I probably could not have acquired that opportunity to test that before it goes, you know, fully public on the on the profile. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. Um, fantastic. So uh, I also want to say to our lovely audience here, if you have any specific questions around LinkedIn, you know, it doesn't have to be only our specific topics, but if it's around LinkedIn, you got the man in the house. I mean, it doesn't get better than this. This is a great time um, to ask. And if there are questions which are beyond LinkedIn, I'll go and answer them in the comments. Please come on LinkedIn. I'll answer them. If you go on YouTube, I'll, I'll lose out on the chat. I wanted to say that. So I, I make sure I, you know, I don't waste your time. Um, interesting. Somebody says premium is worth having. Good for you. I think there's a whole, like I've done a whole post and people have done articles and articles. Is it worth it? Is it not? It's what you want, right? What you make yeah. of it. Kevin, are you on the premium? I am on the premium. I've been on the premium for almost 15 years. Yeah. So a uh, couple yeah. things I love, uh, all you can eat online learning, right? Yes. So yes. if you're trying and to- do you actually use it? I've slowed down. <laughs> uh, the last one I did, I did a certificate program for, uh, do you want to be a data scientist? And that mm -hmm. actually has college accreditation wow. that you can get from taking that coursework. It's like 18 hours. It's a bunch of different uh, video courses that they have and testing. So I used to do it once a week. I would take a course. I've slowed down on that and I need to go back and do it because I do enjoy it. Yes. Um, but if you're looking to transition into another opportunity, you know, that's a small fee to pay every month to be able to get all that education. And then it puts, you know, these little certificates on your LinkedIn profile that say you have those skills. So even if they're not seeing the skills in your work history, they're seeing it through LinkedIn. So when recruiters are looking for someone with this new skill, you have it shows it. up. It yeah. shows up. Um, as far as LinkedIn, um, uh, training is concerned, I complete LinkedIn learning. I completely uh, agree with you. That itself pays for itself, right? So that's a great investment in itself. But if you're looking at other ancillary things, you take a call, you know, do your homework. Um, and, um, and there's a little hack too. If yeah? you join LinkedIn learning, hmm. it's about half the price of LinkedIn premium and you get LinkedIn premium with it. Do they know that? I don't know if LinkedIn Premium knows that, but LinkedIn Learning sure does. <laughs> so guys, we just heard a top premium, secret. Experience it. That's the way to do it. <laughs> hopefully, LinkedIn is hopefully LinkedIn is not listening. If you want to get LinkedIn Learning, which is half the price of LinkedIn Premium, you get access to all the features of LinkedIn Premium, including in mail. Okay, okay, yeah. Kevin, that's, you just dropped. That's the way in. All right. Amazing. Oh, yeah. I, I knew this was going to be a good conversation, but you might have just saved a lot of people a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. And uh, uh, when it comes to newsletters, I had a question about newsletters as well. And our, our lovely friend here, Jack, says you back in the day, because I wanted newsletters and now I have it. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm just so overwhelmed because there's so much out there. But there's a new thing that has started because mm -hmm. firstly, you get access to newsletters now. I think if you turn creative mode on LinkedIn Live and newsletters, if you are a good kid, you'll get it. Mm -hmm. um, start writing if writing is your thing, right? If going live and videos is not your thing, writing is your thing. That's a great way to get noticed on whatever geeky topic like makes you come alive. And now there is a way that the LinkedIn newsletter can appear in your featured section. This is like hot off the press. Yes. Tell us about that. And basically that's it. Now, you know, in that featured area, you can actually link directly to what's called your newsletter page. Whereas before you could link single newsletters in your feature, but that got pretty crowded. This one allows you to actually link to your, your subscription page and it has a big subscribe button right there and it's in blue. So if somebody's coming to your profile, they can press that and they will then get your newsletter. And what's interesting about newsletters, it is the only opportunity on LinkedIn that you have to, on the first newsletter, for it to be sent out to every single first level connection you have. You only wow. you that. And so it piques the interest, maybe re-stimulates uh, some connections you had, right? And so forgotten, you have that opportunity. Forgotten connections. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one thing too, and people don't realize this about newsletters, there are two people, they might even be in this group today, uh, Claire Carroll, 
and Jillian Whitney who do video all the time and they're fabulous with it and Elia and they can actually embed videos into the yes. newsletter. So yes. you could send somebody a newsletter and really it's there's very little writing. It's all their videos, right? And that's beautiful. So play to your strengths. Play to yeah, your strengths. Uh, do stuff. That's fantastic. Uh, Kevin, uh, thank you so much. This is really useful as far as newsletters are concerned. Um, I have a quick comment to make about blasting to your first degree connections. And I think it's a great reminder because I remember you said it in our last live stream and I think it's worth repeating. But in the morning, top of the morning, uh, in the meantime, top of the morning to Erica. I doubt it. Jillian's watching. She's watching the replay. Hey, Jillian, put in hashtag replay because it's five in the morning for her or four or six yeah, in the yeah. morning for her. Um, and I wanted to... Uh, it's amazing because everybody, you know, our lines are crossing. Rachel had the same like exact point that you mentioned about the lower, lower price point. And and Shelly says, I was at a LinkedIn audio event last night. I thought it was a positive. We'll talk about LinkedIn audio. That's I I'm also really positive. And Zainab, I completely agree with you. Little things add up, right? So when you're not actively like working and you're looking, you want to watch, you want to watch your wallet. I think it's a very, very fair comment. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And so Melissa's like, okay, Kevin, I'm signing up. to <laughs> You <laughs> should charge a little commission, Kevin, because you'd like totally earn it. And here's a little fun little uh, nugget that I didn't know about. You can also sign up to LinkedIn Learning through some local libraries. Oh, good to know. You can. Yeah, you can. I didn't know about And premium it. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Jules, our lovely friend from Fab Four and Friends. We are on Clubhouse. I don't know how long we're going to continue on Clubhouse. We love hanging out, but there's this new little shiny little friend in the picture called LinkedIn Audio, and uh, we're going to talk about LinkedIn Audio. Okay, Erica has a question. LinkedIn is testing an audio feature. Do you think after the initial hub around Clubhouse died? Okay, um, Erica, we'll get to your question because LinkedIn audio is our very um, next topic, which is audio events. One thing I want to remind everyone, particularly to our lovely viewers who are in career transition today. I know you're watching and I know you're working really hard and we see you, right? There's something that Kevin said that I think is worth repeating. Kevin, I, you're, you're like, what did I say? <laughs> <laughs> when the first time, now I'm not going to go into the is it good or is it bad? The open to work. We have mm -hmm. beaten that horse to death so many times. We're not going to talk about should you, shouldn't you. What I am going to say is the first time that you announce to your community that you're actively looking, that open to work thing, Kevin, yeah. I remember you saying yeah. it is blasted to every single first degree connection. Only if you take the steps all the way to the end. So yes. when you do open to work and yes. you select everyone right yes. which means that that green banner is going to be on your profile picture some people don't like that some people love it yes. you know yes and you know so that's their their you know choice to make but yes. when you turn that on linkedin gives you the option of uh putting a post together right and it has the standard default because linkedin believes we can't write right I'm looking for a job, blah, blah, blah. Help me out if you can, something like that, you know? And instead of sending that part out, take off the default, write something. Yeah. Tell them what's going on. Tell them a story. Yeah. Get them involved, get them back in love with you. And then say, hey, you know, if I can help you in these areas, I'm, yes. I'm free to do that. I've got time. If you can help me in these areas, I really appreciate it. Use that because. What LinkedIn does is most posts only go out to a percentage. Isn't um, it really small, Kevin? Like five or 10%? Oh yeah, it's 5% at the beginning. And if they engage and react, they'll put it out to another 5%, 10%. And it grows kind of like the rollout waves, right? This is the one time in a post that when you post that, when you finally say, uh, you know, uh, submit, that actually goes out to every single one of your first level connections in their feed and also in their notifications. Yeah. So if you've got a great network yes. and you can't try to touch base with them all, this is a very efficient way. Think of it like a PR broadcast. If you do it on Friday night, nobody's going to see it. No. Right. That's when you, that's when you do a PR broadcast for something bad. We had an oil. Monday scene, morning. Yeah. Right? yeah. Monday yeah. morning, yeah. maybe even Tuesday morning, because sometimes Monday mornings are nuts. Right. So find the time that most of your viewers are going to be interacting on LinkedIn. 
that's when you want to release it so you can get the maximized impact. And believe it or not, once you do that, you can then go back and turn off the little banner. Yes. And you do that by just clicking recruiters only instead. Yes. And that turns off the banner if you don't want the banner on. So exactly. You can use it as but a it's press worth, release. Yeah. It's a, it's worth it to have a press release to have that even if you think the green looking arc thing is ugly, it doesn't matter. Um, do what you want to do, do what's best. But this is a very handy dandy little um, you know, hack to to help you out. And so far, LinkedIn has not limited it to one. So Ooh. If you did it every week, every month, but you gotta add value when you do it, right? People will tune out. People will will switch yeah. off. So you want to write the first one so well. I think personally speaking, it's a preference, uh, Kevin, but I, I think do it once and do it well. Um, yes. If you keep doing it again and again, um, people will be like, hey, didn't I just see this guy? Yeah. Uh, looking <laughs> for something. you were last month. Exactly. Yeah. Always want to capitalize. Hey, Jared, that's really, really true. So this uh, tip is turning out to be um, really popular as well. And now um, let's... Uh, See, I have a question and then I want to get into the audio because people are like, ooh, you know, itching to hear more about audio. Doug Lehman. Hey, Doug, are there plans for video response engagement in LinkedIn post? Video where you can actually respond back with video? Hmm. Not yet. I Not would yet. love to see it. Now, hmm. with integrated video into the platform, that hmm. is a very good possibility. And I know they're talking about it where you could respond back or even, you know, well, yeah, created as a comment, basically, as, as video back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Um, we have other early risers along with you, Kevin. Lauren mm -hmm. is in the house. And Jared mm -hmm. says, bingo, you got to add value, right? Not just ask for a job. Because Absolutely. that can, to, to the purest of hearts, it can still be a turn off. So, all right. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room, I think, <laughs> which is <laughs> audio and um in case people are new, Kevin, give us a, like a one sentence summary. What is LinkedIn audio and why does it matter? LinkedIn audio is connecting people through voice. Part of what I enjoy on live is I get to hear Sonal, right? I get to hear people and there's a connection there. I read all the time. I don't get the same connection. So sometimes I'm looking for that. And sometimes I want to be heard as an individual. So LinkedIn audio events, right, allows us the ability to create what we call an event, not a room, that, that's Clubhouse, right? We create this event and we're allowed to have people come in. We can invite them in and they can talk to us directly through this and we can talk back directly through this uh, process. And it's kind of nice. You raise your hand like you would in class, right? The teacher calls on you, brings you up, that kind of stuff. So it's very, uh, it can be very well organized if you allow it, uh, depends on that host who is uh, putting on the event, um, but it, it gives that interactivity. The beauty of audio events is if I'm having a bad hair day, I don't have to worry about it, right? Yes, less friction, where, less yeah, friction. Yeah, I've, I've got my, you know, baby or something like that, or, you know, something's going on and I don't want them to see or hear that. They don't have to. You know, I can get in there and I can join in. And so there's kind of a low bar for getting in there and getting active. And that's the difference. You know, when we're doing live here, people are, are writing comments. And, and so you have to read those comments, right? And try to juggle all that. Whereas you could invite that person up to talk to you and me, and we can interact with them. That's real, the real time, real time yeah. exchange. That is what LinkedIn audio is. If you're not familiar with Clubhouse, Clubhouse is doing the exact same thing, but LinkedIn is the new kid on the block. Um, and so, Kevin, when I'm live, will my notif will my uh, network get a notification that I'm on live audio? It, it will say that you are hosting an audio event. You also have an event page right, yes. where people can come to so you can post about that. Yes. And from that, if you are the host, you can directly invite people. Right. And if you are just a, a listener is what they call. If you're a listener and you're joining the event, you can forward that event to people you would like Got it. to be Got there. It. Like, Got oh, it. you know, you need to be at this thing. And so yeah. you can send that and they can click on it and come in and, and, yeah. and join the yeah. event. And, and how is it different from a live video? It's the fact that 
we don't just read your comments we talk to each other it becomes more sort of you know personal right it's it's a uh, it's like having a phone conversation and i think it's in beta right now kevin so it's only 15 yes. people on uh, 15 people on stage or 15 people overall at any point um you can have as many as you want in the audience there, there doesn't seem to be a uh, a cap on listeners but there is a cap on how many people you can have up to speak at a time which i like because yeah, honestly but, like you go through <laughs> like, like it's better speaking? just to have one or two who's up speaking? there right? <laughs> yeah because you don't really need 15 up there and one thing that i think they've got to fix because again this is beta so we're giving them feedback yes. um when you come into that we call it the stage now right and that's where you can talk as a speaker when you come into that stage um the linkedin it randomizes the sort level. So it's not the first person to appear gets to the top. So somebody else can come in and, and so coordinating. Okay. Unlike, it, unlike Clubhouse. Okay. Yeah. As a host, coordinating it can be a bit difficult if you don't remember yeah. who was there first. So I would say, you know, only invite one or two at a time on yeah. the stage, although you can have up to 15 on the stage. If they all start talking, we're in trouble. <laughs> I, of course. And and Varsha, uh, to your point, it comes down to moderating, right? We do this on Clubhouse already. So if too many people, you're like, you also want to watch out for security. You'll have some, uh, we call it Clubhouse bombing, you know, mm -hmm. inappropriate uh, type uh, comment coming or person coming, you can boot them out. So you want to see initially who is this person. And what I like is that you can see the profile. Unlike yes. Clubhouse, which is may or may not be complete here. If you see an incomplete or a blank LinkedIn profile, that is already a red flag. Yeah, you don't want to invite them on the stage because they could be anybody and they're probably there to make trouble. That's the nice thing about this. Unlike Clubhouse, you really don't have much skin in the game. Here, you've got your professional profile, your network, all that stuff. So if you're going to go into a meeting and just make trouble, right, you could lose your account. Yes, yes, now, That absolutely. doesn't mean you can't challenge opinions and you can't have discussions. That's what it's there for. But if you're just going in there, you know, screaming expletives and stuff like that, uh, you know, you could lose your account. Or you come in and you start like getting like, um, you know, hey, I, I, you know, come, come, I'm looking for coaching clients. Are you trying to promote yeah, yourself? 40% um, off if you go today. No, <laughs> None no, of that. Nobody likes it. Nobody it likes won't be it. tolerated. Exactly. Makpool, uh, regarding LinkedIn premium, we've moved on, but go and watch the replay because we answered this question and I'm sure uh, that will um, help you. So I saw this question. I'm, uh, Erica, I'm going to get to you. So Rich says, so how do you enable it? That is the question. <laughs> it is um, easier than we think. When you open up your, your profile, right, uh, you've got this little column down the left-hand side of your of your profile, right? And down there, you'll see something called events. And those are events that you may be currently going to or have gone to in the past. You'll see a big uh, um, X or not an X, uh, a plus sign, right? You click on that plus sign. That allows you to set up an event. In the events, the type of event, you have the drop down for LinkedIn Live. Um, you have a drop down if you get this issue to you, you'll have the drop down for audio event. And so that was my, that. I think that was the question. It's like, uh, it sounds fairly intuitive, Kevin, what you're saying, but this is a way also to check, do you have LinkedIn audio yes, or not? Absolutely. And right and now, right because now, it's in data. you mm -hmm. know, they had what, what they called a uh, creator accelerator program. And that was a hundred people uh, across the U.S. that got hand selected for LinkedIn to really develop as creators. They're the ones who are beta in today. So they're beta level one. And then uh, they selected another group of LinkedIn creators. I'm in that group. That's beta level two, right? And they're learning a lot. They're going to make a lot of changes, I think. And so when it rolls out, it's going to be a better product. And I say kudos, first of all, for LinkedIn for doing that, because normally they launch it and we've got to fix it, right? They're actually trying to fix it before it technically launches. And they're using a very closed group. And I think that's smart. The other thing I, I'm going to say congratulations to LinkedIn is to make this feature come to LinkedIn, they spent tens of millions of dollars changing out the technology stacks behind LinkedIn. So mm. they wanted to do this a year ago. They fell in love with Clubhouse a year ago, but they had to make this investment and then they had to bring in 
software, hardware, everything else to create the opportunity to do this. So huge investment on their part. And that's what's going to integrate video and audio and everything else throughout the platform. So yeah, you're very right. And I think that um, when we spoke in 2020, the first time you were on Supercharged Fridays, we talked about their number one source of revenue being talent solutions, right? And obviously it continues to be a priority, but like we said, creator, you know, it's becoming more and more important and this is a great uh, sign of that. So now I'm I'm hoping LinkedIn is listening. Earlier when you talked about LinkedIn learning, I'm like, Ugh. but now this is a, this is um, not just the investment, but making it a priority, yeah. right? And and saying um, because LinkedIn audio uh, or any audio type feature like Clubhouse, uh, uh, Twitter, I'm not on it, but Twitter Spaces is very very popular. Mm -hmm. Anything like that is. Um, you know, people will say, oh, it's not interesting anymore. Like, I'm done with that. So LinkedIn has seen people riding the wave. They've seen people come, leave, and yet, you know, they're continuing to invest in it and uh, multi-million, like you said. Uh, so that's a, a great point. And uh, Varsha, moderator, Jeff, you guys are very kind. I think it comes down to boundaries. And we are all pretty good on LinkedIn with our boundaries, right? So it'll be a good test when we're doing our audio events, who you want to bring up? Because I don't read every event, uh, every comment here. I, I, I'm not going to highlight <laughs> every one of them. If they are adding something, obviously I'll bring it or, you know, unless I, sorry, unless I miss something. That's not what I mean. But the point is you're in control. That's, I think what Kevin, that's really important when you're, uh, when it's your own audio event, it's your party. You get to see who's invited and, and somebody and puts up their hand. It. Just like a host of a good party, if somebody's making trouble, you call them an Uber, right? You get them out of there. Uh, if other people are adding to the party, you give them a little more stage, right? So it, yeah. it is yeah. completely up to that host to make that event successful. Yes. And looking into the crystal ball, what do you think would, like Erica's question is more sort of broad. Um, if you had to make a prediction, how do you think it's going to play out, LinkedIn Audio? I think it's going to be extremely successful. Yes. Now, I think it's going to be more towards uh, business subjects yes. or yes. inclusion, you know, those kind of things. Um, I know one that's that's got probably one of the highest attendances was actually on uh, History of Africa. Ooh. So they brought in speakers to talk about things and events that happened in Africa and how that evolved that community. And a lot of people are participating in that. So there'd be a lot more kind of cultural things. Clubhouse to me was kind of uh, like meeting your friends at the pub, right? You could sing, uh, you could tell jokes, uh, you know, you could have fun. You could tell them some inside deep, dark secrets sometimes. It was more of a closed environment, a little safer in a lot of ways in some rooms, right? And then some rooms were always on the other end of the spectrum. Um, LinkedIn is going to be a little more professional. It's going to be more like having a conversation with colleagues in the staff uh, break room, right? HR might show up. And That's my the point. Server. That's my point. <laughs> I'm thinking business owners and job seekers are going to jump on it and love it. Nothing Absolutely. to hide, nothing to lose. And if, you think about it, if you're looking for a job and you are one of 820 million people, you have to stand out. This is an opportunity for you to say, I have knowledge leadership in this subject matter. And I've got these kind of connections that can back me up, right? And so it's a huge opportunity. To it's a huge opportunity. Because I, I remember, uh, Kevin, in the early days of Clubhouse, there were rooms that were dedicated, like literally a recruiter or two recruiters. Mm -hmm. And they're looking for that needle in a haystack. Let's say it's, I don't know, a specific tech skill that is very difficult to find. You're like, if you have this, come into the room. If I were a recruiter, I would love it because it's almost like a preliminary screening. Uh, I found everybody from literally sitting at my desk, not you know sending an email, nothing like literally with my phone. So I'm I'm thinking that would do really well um, on. I don't like the name LinkedIn Audio, but they don't have a name for it. Um, but the employees, right? So coming from a culture where pro pro open communication is promoted, you're gonna thrive. Right. Mm -hmm. If you're coming from a culture where people, you know, like I know so many companies, Kevin, I'm sure you do as well. We're like, please don't please don't uh, talk on LinkedIn when you're working like in our company. Please don't share uh, stuff. You know, conservative. I'm not saying good or bad. I, yeah, I, I do think they're from a different era. <laughs> 
that might be problematic, right? You know, it can be. So, you know, all companies should have whatever their social media um, norms are, right? They, they should basically have something that an employee can look at and say, these are my guidelines. Yes. This is what the company, you know, wants me to talk about or not talk about. But if it is you as an individual, right, and you're not talking about your company and you're not giving away any secrets, yes. you should be you. You yes. should be able to be you. They can't really say you can't do that as long as you're not doing it as a representative of the company. Yes, so, exactly. You know. Exactly. No, that makes perfect sense. A um, little bit of common sense, which is unfortunately not, <laughs> not that common. Um, there's a question here, Kevin. Is it recommended to add job, ex job experience and description on LinkedIn? So if an organization job description will differ, how do you tackle this job to get shortlisted? Did you follow the question? I think I did. Well, first of all, you know, if you if you go back to the thought of your profile is your brochure, right? If I hand you a brochure on a product you want to purchase and it's got no information on it, how likely are you to purchase the product Not at all, right? So you've got to give me something in that content. You've got to tell me some of your wins as part of your work experience, right? So I can get a feel for if I buy uh, Sonal, I'm going to get something like this right? For my company. And that's, you know, part of that. So you definitely want to complete your profile, bring content in, um, avoid the responsible for, right? And go into your achievements. What did you bring to the table that the last organization or the current organization didn't expect that makes you a better choice than somebody who is responsible? And responsible to me means you showed up to work, right? You did your job, you locked the door when you left. That's responsible. Yeah, yeah, companies yeah. can find responsible all day long. They want somebody who goes above and beyond what the job description says, because that's a better investment for them. Yes, and so that's what you want to bring across in the profile. Yes, and Shankar, if you want to know more about what Kevin just said, go back to the one uh, or replay from October 2020 because we talked a lot more detail about like your profile, improving every aspect of your profile. Mm -hmm. And and Kevin didn't leave anything out. So it's um, definitely worth um, a replay. I think not just for Shankar, but I think for everyone. Um, all right. So um, we're coming close to the end now. And um, before, uh, okay, I'm going to end the official thing and then I'm going to throw in a little spanner because I found a new feature here on StreamYard and I wanted to try it but I will let you know that the live stream is over so if anybody wants to leave you can leave but I wanted to try this out uh, so before we uh, before we leave a quick wrap up right so we talked about so many different things in 2022 that you need to know it's only January <laughs> <laughs> <gasps> like I'm exhausted. So it's like lots of features. You want to sort of keep an eye out. The timing varies. It's based on all the code and all the back back end stuff that LinkedIn is doing. So if you have a feature that your friend doesn't, it doesn't mean you're better than them. So <laughs> long story short, the create a mode. Too, I caution people, you don't have to do every single feature on LinkedIn all the time. You should know about them, get a knowledge of them, but you don't have to use them all. Use the ones that work for you. Yeah. Right. Use the don't ones get that frustrated in that sense. Use you know. the ones that work for you. Um, just because you can doesn't mean you should, right? Um, same thing. I personally think for masks, <laughs> like oh, masks are not important. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. It's it's no. uh, you want to see your own uh, personal preference for that. Um, and then we talked about creator mode, everything around creation, and quick. Uh, we didn't say this here, but in you know, I just want to mention it in a recap. Just because you can post 10 times a day, 10 times a week, doesn't mean you should. So, Kevin, quality, frequency, consistency matters. And, like, and you know what I mean? Value add, right? Value add and also being yours, your own content. Um, if you could do value add 10 times a day and everybody found value in it, that would be amazing, but it doesn't happen, right? It becomes spam. Yes. So, you know, it's good to get involved. It's good to comment every day on other people's posts. But yes. as far as putting out content, you want to do quality. If quality means you can only do one a month, that's better than none, right? But if you can try to at least have one post a week, up to three, if you're really feeling good about this and you're getting engagement, that's going to get you traction 
in yes. that kind of post area. And post can be anything from you know video to long form to short form to polls. All of that is good. <clears throat> and so, you know, get out there and do it uh, because it makes a difference, but don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. Junk polls. I'm going to unfollow you. <laughs> That's a big know, point. You know, what's the favorite bagel? Yeah, I, I'm going to. I don't want to hear what you had for lunch. You yeah, know, those are not, not the time. Not posts. the time. But no. it's in, very good that you said that because I was literally going to talk about Jeff and Jeff's put in a comment here. Um, I think, Jeff, you post three times or two times a week. And mm -hmm. that's great. Because I know, for example, it's a Sunday today, there's going to be a newsletter by Jeff. So mm -hmm. there is no pressure that you have to do it like every single week. So I wanted to mention this because when we talked about creation and, and uh, creator mode and all of that, we talked a lot about audio events. So if you're just joining us, do definitely watch the replay. We talked about newsletters. We said your profile is your brochure. Definitely check out Kevin's profile. Give him a follow. He's got fantastic. I mean, uh, sense of humor and also creative. I mean, look at his LinkedIn URL. It doesn't get doesn't get better than that. <laughs> <laughs> we still want that back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you guys for coming. I'm almost at the end, but before I finish, uh, Kevin, would you be my guinea pig? Would you mind? Absolutely. All right, fantastic. I was going to do this earlier. Unfortunately, we didn't have time. StreamYard has come up with something called background music. And I was wondering if you guys... I'm not going to let say. me know. And I wanted to ask you, Kevin, but also the audience. And, and so if you've come here for Kevin and LinkedIn new features, this is the end of our programming. Thank you for being here. The rest of it, if you want, you're most welcome to go. But I'd love some feedback. So can you hear something? There's a quick burst of... of... Ah, you can hear it. Can okay. Hear. okay. My point is... Do you think it's going to distract? Depends on how you use it, right? Is you it could the, have got a whole song in before I was able to log in today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking, will it like put people to sleep? Like if two people are talking, is it distracting to have background music? That's my question. If you guys are watching, tell us in the... Tell us in the audience what you think. Uh, Kevin, what do you think? I think during the talking, yes. You know, leading up to it, changing a subject, you know, those things might be nice little breaks, right? But you, that's a lot of coordination for you. Yeah, no, for one so, person. You know, I, I think some people are using it as their intro coming in yes. with a stock slide, right? That sits and they got a little music going and they use it as their exit ad, right? Buy more yep. of my stuff. <laughs> with a little bit of music. You, you're you're um yeah. you're you're speaking the same language. Uh Varsha, I tend to agree. I had put it loud because I wasn't sure if you guys are listening, but when people are talking obviously in the in the um, in the background. Thank you guys for being here. Kevin, there's a lot of thank you from all over the place. Rachel calls you the Walter Cronkite. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna Google the I'm gonna Google who this person is. I is it He's from dead. my movie? Is He's it from dead. Movie? Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> 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 he's dead Walter is that the guy who used to be in Dennis the Menace no he was a, a news anchor for many many years and very um, unbiased probably the last of like the unbiased news anchors who actually tried to do news okay, okay. So, fantastic um, uh, people are saying music time. is great music is great but more as an intro and outro because otherwise it'll be distracting thank you for your feedback everybody take care everybody uh we shall I'll, I'll be here next week i will be with it we talked about tv anchor it's funny you said that i will be with an ex tv anchor and we're going to talk about video presence this is someone who's actually been on tv in the united states so if you guys are thinking about having a more powerful video presence definitely check this one out next week with my new friend who's going to be joining us all the way from i think north uh, north carolina please give a round of applause to Kevin, for being here today. It's early here. Kevin, you're amazing, as always. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity.